This is the second recording of a Contemplation by Tiber, the second uh, part of the emails that we exchanged uh, recently. Please refer to the previous NPC Contemplation for more details. Here goes. I was five when Ceausescu and his regime fell. My friends are a few years younger. I do remember a lot of things about it, even some gunshots during the December of 89. I now know how an event, revolution, like that is staged. Doesn't make sense that 20 million people are scared of one individual for 27 years and one day, and they just become brave and we switch to capitalism with the same politicians. Even though my friends may not have experienced it directly, we all have families, we were all told stories, and we all have seen hundreds of hours of videos and images. Even if one didn't experience it directly, at least 40 other countries did, and they all had the same results. Spying on your neighbor and report them if they would say anything against the party, or shaming them on social media, or asking the, that they have their rights removed for going against the dogma. It is the same thing. What both have in common is the lack of personal responsibility. It is blaming others for one weakness, a god that got out of control and makes us feel like puppets. It's normalizing that problem until one doesn't see it as a problem anymore. It's willful blindness. If everyone becomes a puppet, then nobody is a puppet, since nobody is free or responsible. You are right when you say that they don't like uh, that they don't see it like this because it comes in a different package. The rainbow package. Not only that they don't see it's the same thing, they don't understand both packages are false. If the name of the game would be find the truth or let the truth find you, then the system fights against the truth. We are the only connection it has to it. The gaming room can exist. Even the video console can exist. Even the game can exit. But if nobody is playing, would it still be the same game? They can't fight against the truth without us. A lower resolution of our true self. A fallen one, so to speak. Hence the fight against objectivity, truth. There is no male or female, anything can be anything. There is no beauty, anything can be beautiful, fat is beautiful and so on. It's not even a real baby, a blue rectangular is art, a beat is music. When nothing is grounded, built on a rock or truth, everything falls. If everything is subjective, then nothing really is. So it becomes the only thing real, so to speak, that is left to the system. Everything for the state, nothing outside the state, nothing against the state, like Mussolini said. Replace the word state for any dogma, diversity rainbow package, religion or any ideology that removes the individual personal responsibility, their personal cross or their personal connection to the truth. And an NPC is born. It's ironical how stereotypes reflect a cult where all members lack individualism. Take someone who listens to rap music, for example and I used to listen to it at some point, versus someone who listens to rock. They will move their hands while talking, more than someone who listens to rock music. They will wear larger clothes versus the military boots and dark shirts and maybe long hair, and the list can go on. None of them had an impulse from the player using the joystick to wear or act in this manner. For someone who will never outgrow that part of their personality, there will be nothing outside rap music or rock music or football, weed, alcohol, nothing outside the dogma. A balanced person can listen to rock, 
rap, be a football fan, a fan, or listen to classical music without imitating a member of the Vienna Philharmonic. Imitation is fake. The rainbow ideology is so false that its members don't even realize that even its symbol is fake. A rainbow has seven colors. The rainbow flag they use has only six. Where is indigo? This is my note. The fight is against the truth. Do you accept that division is unity? Do you accept that a man is female? Do you accept that it's just a cluster of cells and not a baby? Do you accept our rules, the rules of the state, the rules of the dogma? Accepting a false reality is the real meaning of lying. Not answering yes or no to a question, that is not lying. Here is an example. The state knocks at someone's door asking if they are hiding any diversity deniers. If the person says yes, they are doing the moral thing. If they say no, they are doing the immoral thing. Hence, not being a good person, a model citizen, etc. The premise on which it is all based is fake. And this is the argument. The state is looking for those diversity deniers because they are considered to be a threat to the system itself. In reality, they are not a threat to anyone, hence the ones hiding them are not in danger. By answering yes, they are technically saying the truth, but are accepting the false premise, which is that the diversity deniers are a danger. Therefore, accepting a false narrative, a false reality. Like in the poem, giving birth to waters in water. My note, I will include a translation of the poem in the description uh, that it is mentioned here. The system has all the resources, all the money, but not our consent. Do you consent to disconnect from the truth, from the voice of reason, and accept ours? Are you willing to get involved with creation and give birth to realities inside a reality and become whatever you desire? As long as you desire one of the moral choice pre-approved by the system? Accepting a false narrative, accepting a lie, is what creates more mind parasites that uh, will spread. For example, a friend of mine had an abusive father. The father would beat his brother, but not him. The father would always say, he is bad, he deserves this. Obviously, a six-year-old is innocent. He is not even responsible for his own actions. The issue with the father was that he had accepted a false reality, that the child was not innocent in his eyes. He had convinced himself that the issue was the child and not him. So he tried to bend that reality. I am not saying that this reality is any more real than a TV show is real. But even in a TV show, a character has some traits that he shouldn't break if he still wants to be that character. Like uh, Batman wouldn't be Batman if he would start killing all the bad guys. He would then become Punisher. In the end, his father manages to create that reality. The child becomes a problematic person, stealing cars, getting into fights, running away from home, until eventually he got married to an abusive woman became a father, and for a short period of time, he became his own father, a copy of a copy. One of the conversations between the child, now a father, and his father, now the grandfather, was the grandfather. You told me you would never hit your children, that you would be a better father than I was. And the father, he deserves this, he is bad. This conversation reminded me of a quote from Superman Returns, 2006. The son becomes the father and the father becomes the son. Happy to say that the father, once the child, manages to break that cycle. And the father, now a grandfather, admitted his own sins and now his reality is less grey. I do think that people can be saved. 
I don't think it's our job to save them, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. It means that before putting the oxygen mask on someone else, we should make sure that we have ours on. Either wise, the other way, we both might die. And putting the mask on ourselves might take us our whole life, depending on how close we came to the truth. I will finish with the full quote from Superman Returns, asking you to imagine the player holding the joystick, talking to the character in the game. You will be different. Sometimes you'll feel like an outcast, but you'll never be alone. You will make my strength your own. You will see my life through your eyes, as your life will be seen through mine. The son becomes the father, and the father becomes the son.